Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop in the F14. Um, see I'm got the G10 here and the CNC router and I'm just uh, cutting out parts. Once I get this little part here cut out, I'll show you guys what all I've been working on. And y'all can see that I have been doing some work. Not much on this thing, but I've been doing some. I haven't been very motivated lately. So, you'll have to excuse me. So, alright, I got it zeroed in. I'm trying to make use as much of this stuff as possible. Uh, these are the bleeding edge slat sliders that you see. This is 8 inch G10. Um, there's two that are the same and one that's slightly different. The furthest one inboard is just a little bit taller than the other two. Um, I didn't do that on purpose. It's just how it ended up. Because the, the rib is a little bit larger and re, redoing the, the tool pass and everything on the prototype is just a little more involved than I want to do right now. Plus I might do it that way just to make sure that uh, everything works out well. Anyways, turn the spindle on here, and we'll get started. one of the little slider rails for the leading edge slats on this thing. Um, originally I had planned not to do leading edge slats on the prototype, but since I got this little doohickey and I've got all the slat parts drawn up, I'm just going to go ahead and do them. Uh, they'll probably be permanently closed, well, semi-permanently closed for the first few flights just to eliminate um, some stuff to have to deal with. But after the first one or two flights, I'll probably start, I'll probably activate them to start working. See, I've got three cut out here. So this is the three for one wing. Like I said, there's one that's just a little bit taller in this profile. Well, it's a little bit taller altogether by about, oh, 20 thousandths. So a teeny tiny little amount, but just enough to make a difference. So, all right, let me zoom you guys out and we'll, take a trip over here to the wing panel. So bear with the camera movement. All right, here we got the wing panel. Um, you see we've got three leading edge slat sliders now. Tracks, whatever you want to call it. I think these are, these are appropriately named sliders, all three. This is a little oddball, bigger one. Those there, those three there. 
Um, you can see these two pieces are cut out of G10 and the tip piece here is cut out of G10. There's only three. Uh, the real airplane's got like nine of these things or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven per wing. I'm only doing three. They're in scale locations. I'm just knocking it down to three. And then in two of the other scale locations will actually be the, uh, the, the push rods for them. Um, you'll notice the holes that are in them. All three have holes. This is where the torque tube, the carbon torsionally woven uh, torque rod arm tube or whatever for the slat, the leading edge slats are gonna go. One servo for one slat. Uh, one's gonna do two, but then you gotta put an extra hatch somewhere. And I don't, I don't really feel like putting more hatches. I hate hatches, especially when they're unnecessary. And the, the carbon tube I'm using is 90 bucks for a five foot section. It's expensive, but it, it, it's very strong torsionally, so you don't ever have to worry about it twisting. So I got that. Three on there, the carbon tube is going to go full length to the, the thing, and then there'll be two arms in the middle, and then a third one for the servo to attach to. See these G10 parts? That's just, that was a solid sheet of 3 16 that I milled down. Put little nipples here for the cover plate that'll go over, the hole for the carbon tube, and then the slot here that I milled in. Three dimensionally, that's all one piece. It's not two, two or three pieces glued together. But I milled that slot in there, that way. Go to slider rail, goes right in. These things are, can, there's very little, I haven't done any sanding work or any kind of prep work to this thing. There's a little nobule on that. And then the, the step over on the inside here is only four, 40 thousandths of an inch. I can knock that down to 10 or 20 thousandths and really get it nice and smooth. But you don't need it. So you can see there's a, it's not quite, the slider rail is not quite the, the thickness of this. It's about, there's about 10 thousandths of play in there once you put the cover plate on there. So you don't have to worry about it binding up. But nice and smooth. Kind of sounds like sandpaper right now, but a little 400 grit paper in there before. Oh, a little piece of 400 grit paper to be A okay. So there's that one. You can see when the, slider rail gets up there it's sucked in nice and tight and it kind of follows the airfoil of it and then when it comes down you see it slides down it droops in the front just like the real one's supposed to do and there is a little bit of play um, if you go to a full scale airplane with leading edge slats there's always a little bit of play here so it's <laughs> it's pretty dang close just like the real one getting this thing perfect with that curve because then you see the, the curve, it kind of curves up and it curves back down. Getting that perfectly slot free would be near impossible. So plus it would probably bind a lot. So there's that one. Same thing here in the middle one. The rail fits in there, a little bit of play in it. Not much, just a little bit. And then it sucks up and follows the airfoil. Same thing for the tip one as well. So essentially, other than those carbon tubes, which I have not ordered yet because there's a two week lead time on getting them because they're custom made. Um, this wing is nearly ready to, to, uh, to close out. I just gotta do the carbon tubes. I gotta cut the, uh, the arms for the slats, the spoilers and all that good stuff. And, and then the, the spar material. And then glue these hatch doubles in place. And then assemble all the internal crap together and glue stuff together. Separated the flap hinges. Um, I told you guys these are gonna be two pieces. You can see this is essentially one flap hinge. Flap hinge here, go woo -hoo. And it works up you down, up you down, hinges like a door. Um, I did say this is two pieces. Well, three if you count the hinge. Hinge pulls out. Nice little hole there in the middle. Hinge pops apart. So what you got is one three-dimensional machine piece here and another three-dimensional machine piece here. Got the little nipples and the sockets. So what happens is you smear high saw, throw them together, take your little 3 16 drill bit in there to kind of clear any high saw out that might get in the in the hole. Clamp it, leave it to leave it to cure. Then when you're done, and this is all installed in the wing pre pre-done. It slots into the spar and off you go. The next one, exact same way, pull your hinge out. That's with two pieces. These don't fit the greatest. I kind of had to 
adjust the CAD files, but they're usable. And you'll notice these are a lot more complex because when you look at them from this direction, they're not full thickness. When you put the halves together, throw the hinge in here to help hold it in, in alignment, you'll notice there's a gap. Why is the gap there? Easy. 440 rod end, ball link, goes right in between. So what happens is your ball link for your flap control arm will be about in that position there when it's up and about like this when it's down. And this, you can see it goes all the way through. This isn't a heavy duty, this is just a standard 440 ball link and 440 rod. The heavy duty links are what I'll end up using. The reason for this slot is the full scale. On every one of these flat positions, again, these are all in the scale location, there's a little uh, rotary hydraulic actuator or whatever for the flaps, and these go through it and attach to the flaps again, and there you go. Scale flap hidden hinge actuation system. Um, again, holes in that hit in the number two, three, and four hinges on the flap sides. Hinge there, hinge there. See number three has a slot two for your two flap. The two flap servos are they're pretty close to each other. But so it's what I had to do. I can't fit a servo out here. This the spars are just too close together. And then another hole out here on the fourth hinge. And then the fifth hinge, no hole. The reason why the hole 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 is just like the leading edge slats, the flap hinge pieces are the supports for the carbon torque rod uh, for the spoiler actuation. So the carbon torque rod goes through here, here, and here. Arms are all in this little area, linkages, all that good stuff. And then all these flat hinges are glued to the Arex skin on the bottom. Um, a little bit of Arex skin on the top for a couple of pieces, mostly this one and this one. And then of course glued to the, to the rear spar. And then there'll be a little hole back here for the uh, slat push rod arm to come through. So that's essentially one whole wing assembly in a nutshell. <laughs> I uh, haven't been very motivated lately. It's just been one thing after another with work and family life and holidays and yeah. So got word the other day that I'd be gone the majority of April for work. So life is going to, or work's going to take me away for a while. So don't expect any more videos for quite some time after the the sixth, maybe the third. I haven't really. They haven't told me when I have to go in yet, but they said early January. So anyways, this is one whole wing panel for the F14. Again, I got to cut a couple more internal pieces out for the spars. And then uh, the plywood piece up here for the actuator wind up mounts. But once I get those pieces cut out and get these carbon tubes and all that stuff cut out, this wing's ready to close up. It's about 90% ready to close up. Just some little oddball nooks and crannies stuff I gotta do. So anyways, that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. That's where we're at as far as getting this thing done. Once this wing goes together, um, the other wing should be pretty quick to to get done because everything is the majority of stuff's already cut out. I got all the wood stuff except for spars cut out. Um, I got cut out all the G10 parts again for that side. I'm waiting to, to make sure they're actually going to work on this. So I'm going to I'm going to join this wing, pull out the mold, and I'm going to hinge the flap and make sure everything's going to work. I'm going to do the spoilers. I'm going to do everything on this one wing panel before I close up that other wing. That way, if I need to make any changes, I can do it. So. Once all that's done and closed and working, and I get the other wing done and closed and working, I gotta make plugs for the wing, the slats on these things. And by that time, I will probably decide to, well, by the time I get back, I'm, I'm probably gonna take a break from this from just a little while. I'll get this wing closed and out so I can at least have a wing panel to show and show and tell or whatever. But after that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and I'm gonna start building the pancakes. So, uh, here come early, late January, early February. I expect to, well, not get very many of any videos for at least a month or two. 
I'll probably start, I might do a couple videos of the pancake. So, anyways, you ladies and gentlemen, have a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you back here next time in the shop.